Now your next album is um, Blue For You. And as far as I know, it is the first time that there's ever been a grand big sponsorship on a rock and roll band in this country, of course. Big time. Levi. Big time. But there's a kind of funny twist to this. There story. is a funny <laughs> twist to it. Yeah, there is a funny twist to it. Levi, who are fairly well known throughout the world, come on. And, uh, you know, from what I remember of it, um, your boys are great, you know, they're always wearing denim, they're a great advert for us. We would like to put a whole campaign around Levi, status quo. We'll make the outfits for them, you know, make the jeans, make the jackets. Went, yeah, fantastic, you know, this is, this is a big deal, this. Um, so the clothes were made, lovely denim jackets and everything, you know. And the poster came out, great poster, all standing there, you know, um, looking cool, Levi. And uh, then it came up about, well, how much did we get paid for this? Because in those days, more fool us, you know, you don't ask up front, you just did Levi deal, great, let's do it. And uh, they've, given you, they've given you so much denim, we're told. I've given you, lots. you know, you've got denim for life there, really. Oh, well, fantastic. And that was probably the first time that we were heavily ripped off and didn't know a thing about it because God knows how much Levi paid for that ad. It, it may not have been a massive sum, but there again, it may have been. But whatever, we were never going to know about it and still never do, never did. We had no idea how much we got paid for that. Or, or, well, I've got a rough idea who took the money, but I'm not going to say on here, am I? Or am I? Mm. Tricky. I mean, you're in the big time now. You're Wembley, London. You're Glasgow Apollo, multiple nights. You're six, six number one albums on the road. Don't like that, yeah. How the hell's that for? What kind of life is that giving to you at this point from Mr. Klaus in walking? Well, I mean, you can, you can, you can only try and imagine it, really. Um, I was rolling with it. I was I was rolling in it and and with it. All of a sudden, I mean, you know, you find yourself with with Rolls Royces and uh, Porsches and all sorts of lovely cars and a beautiful house, swimming pools. And uh, I'm I'm still only I don't know, 21, 22, and you've got this beautiful house in the country and everything that goes with it you know anything you want I bought an, I, I bought my own aeroplane because I learned to fly so uh, the only thing I I had a boat the only thing I didn't have was a train I had you know boats aeroplanes cars beautiful houses and uh, it was just Amazing. I, I just, uh, I just, I can't quite explain how it felt. I mean, anything was all of a sudden possible. And uh, it wasn't until I bought my sort of 12th Porsche, I think, that I got a call from, uh, from my accountant. And he said, can you pop in? Let's just have a word with you. I said, yeah, no problem. So I go up to town. And uh, he says to me, you've just bought another Porsche, haven't you? I said, yeah, it's a Porsche Turbo. I said, it's absolutely beautiful. He said, well, I'm afraid you're, you're going to have to sell it. You, you can't afford it. I said, what do you mean I can't afford it? You know, with, with, all, with all that had been going on and all the hits and all the gigs and all the sellout Wembleys and, you know, everything that was going on. And he just said, uh, you haven't got any money. And uh, I mean, I, I was I was speechless. I, why haven't I got any money? I don't know, but you haven't. And uh, this leads into a whole different area here. Um, I don't know whether you want me to explain it now, but it so transpires that. Um, when we were out in Australia, uh, not Australia, I beg your pardon, when we were in Sun City, 
Uh, this has all been a, a master plan from the then manager, the bank manager, the group, the group's manager, the bank's, the bank manager, the accountant, and a lawyer. All in it together. Go and do some gigs in South Africa, and uh, it's worth a lot of money to you. Okay. Um, there's a slight apartheid issue. Well, we, we don't want to know about that. We want to play to mixed audiences. You know, we want everybody in there. And you know what we're like. I mean, we're inviting the chambermaids. Come on, you've got to come tonight to the gig and all that, you know. And uh, so we're having a perfectly nice time down there, not realising the consequences of what we were doing. Um, uh, and uh, the then manager at the time said uh, I've got to get back to town kid uh, can you just sign this these checks up there's a lot of needs to go out yeah of course sign them up Francis the same dual signatures whole checkbook of checks um, next thing we get we get back from South Africa and there's all the press there going, you know, what have you been doing? Why have you been to South Africa, apartheid and all that, you know? We didn't know anything, of, you know, we didn't know anything about that. We just went out there to play. Loads of people have been out there, you know? All the pictures are on the wall. And I don't know, somebody really leaked it about us. I wonder who that could have been. Tried to bury the band because it very nearly did bury us and the press was awful that we got. People refused to go on the same stage as us, you know, and uh, we had to apologise to the United Nations. And, oh, it was just awful. And after that as well, of course, all the money had disappeared. So the master plan was, it's so sinister, to send us to South Africa, which would bury us, right? and walk off with all the money and half of it worked they walked off with all the money but it didn't bury the band bastards can you believe it you know and i know it's happened to a lot of us in the business but people who are close to you friends who you know you go out sociably with you know and you go around their houses you've known them for years and they're capable of doing that to you I just, you know, I'll, I'll never come to terms with that, I don't think. But you live and learn, don't you?